guys, what is happening? This is Rob and welcome to the third installment of the Game Dev Beat series. Today we're gonna see how to make a cool flamethrower particle effect. The effect will be broken into three pieces, the flame particles, the smoke particles and the sparks. Let's start by taking a look at the texture we'll be using for the different parts. This first one is what we'll be using for the flames. I arranged it into this 2x2 grid because we'll be using it as a texture sheet, more on that later. The second one is this bigger texture for smoke, we're gonna use these in a similar way uh, as for the flames. And finally, here is the one for the sparks, as you can see it's pretty simple. When importing the texture in Unity, make sure to check alpha is transparency in the import settings. Alright, let's start by taking a look at the flames. First of all, let's create a material. Select Particle Standard Surface as the shader and mark it as Additive. Then assign the texture and set the intensity of the HDR for the color to 1.2. Next, moving on to the particle system. Let's first set our duration to 2 seconds. Then make it so the lifetime of the particle is between 0.5 and 2 seconds. For speed, I think a value of 20 results in a pretty good flow. Then let's put size between 2 and 4, and for rotation, 0 to 360. Here be sure to check simulation space as world. This is gonna be pretty important if you plan on having the flamethrower moving at all. Ok, we have some dots going on, but that's not much to look at, is it? So we're gonna assign our flame material in the renderer module. Since we're here, let's also set order in layer to 1, this will allow the flame to always draw on top of the smoke. We can see here that there's definitely something going wrong with how the particles look, that's because each sprite is using the whole texture. We can fix that by enabling the texture sheet animation module. In here, make sure the mode is set to grid and X and Y are both 2. Now change the frame over time curve to be flat at the top. This way, we prevent the particle changing to a different sprite over time. The last thing is to set the start frame as random between two constants, and then do a min of 0 and a max of 4. Doing so, we're simply picking a random sprite from our 4 to create some variety. Ok, now going back, let's set the emission to 80, and then take a look at the shape module. Here I keep the default shape as cone. Then I set the angle to 5.6 and bring the radius down to make it as small as I can. Alright, the next module we want to enable is the limit velocity over lifetime. This will help us slow down the initial burst. I limited the speed to 3 and damped it by 0.1. I also left on the multipliers for the drag. You can see it's starting to take shape. Now we can change the color over lifetime to a fire-like gradient, starting with bright yellows, transitioning to orange, and then end with red. I also made sure to fade the alpha at the beginning and at the end like so. Ok, let's now save it as a new gradient as we will be using it again later on. For the size over lifetime, we're going to change the curve to start from something like 0.35 and then end at 1. This way the spray will start small and enlarge as it travels through space. Finally we just need to enable the rotation over lifetime and set a random constant between minus 45 and 45. And this is all for what concerns the flame part. As you might have noticed this still doesn't look very good. The flame is really only half of the effect itself and that's why we're gonna take a look at the smoke next. So why is the smoke so important? The flame particles are additive, meaning their color will be added to whatever color is in the background. This means that they will look pretty nice in a dark, less saturated environment, but as soon as you increase the brightness and saturation of the background, they suddenly look very washed out. So this is why we introduced the smoke, not only because it looks cool, but because it provides us with the dark background we need to make the fire pop, no matter what the overall environment might be. Ok, let's talk smoke. 
first create the material like we did for the flames. This time, instead of additive, we're gonna use fade, as we don't want the smoke to feel like it's emitting light. Then, assign the texture and make sure color intensity is at zero this time. Then, create a particle system in a child object of the flames. After that, assign the material we just created in the renderer module. Let's address the texture sheet animation right away, before moving on. This time, you need to set the grid to be 5x5. Five five. Again, frame over time curve will be set to be unformally at the top, and start frame at random between 0 and 25. After this is taken care of, let's set the duration in the main module to 2 seconds. The speed is going to be 20, and a start lifetime of 3 seconds. This will allow the smoke to have a bit of overhead compared to the flames. Size is gonna be 3 and 4, making it a bit larger than flames in certain spots. I find this looks better than just a uniform difference throughout. Start rotation is going to be 0 and 360. Simulation space set again to word. For this one, we're also going to set the start color to a dark brown because we're going to keep it consistent throughout. For the emission module, we can set the emission to 60. The shape is gonna have an angle of 5.4 and still be a cone. Radius, again, is gonna be as small as possible. For the limit of velocity over time, we want to have a max speed of 3.2 and a dampen of 0.1. Color over lifetime in this case is only going to control the alpha so we can fade it a bit at the beginning and at the end. In the size over lifetime, we're doing a linear transition between 0.4 and 1. This again helps with having the effect be more irregular in the first part because the size difference with the flame and more consistent toward the end. Finally, let's add the same rotation as the flame randomly between minus 45 and 45 and the smoke is complete you can now see that the effect looks a lot better than just the flames by themselves for a last touch we're gonna add some sparks create another child object with particles make a new material with the same settings as the flame and assign the spark texture and then put the material in the renderer here we also need to change the particle type from billboard to stretched billboard. This will shape our dot to be a bit more like a spark. For that, then let's also set the length scale to 3. Since we're here, let's change the order layer to 2, so they will render on top of flames and smoke. In the main module for the sparks, let's set duration to 2. Lifetime between 0.6 and 1. And start speed same as flame, 20. For size I choose 0.3 and 0.7 and again word for simulation space. In the emission I made the rate over time go between 10 and 30. This way we don't get a constant stream of sparks which adds some nice variety. Shape wise we we'll still use a cone but the angle is a bit bigger at 11.5 with also a bigger radius of 0.2. Next, we enable the limit velocity over lifetime with a speed of 10 and a dampen of 0.1. For the color over lifetime, we can grab the flame gradient we saved earlier. Finally, let's add a noise module to create some random movement. I set the strength to 1, frequency to 0.05, scroll speed to 6, and octaves to 4. With that, our flamethrower effect is complete. And that's it for today, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Game Dev Bits. I really appreciate it and I hope you learned something of value from this. I highly encourage everyone to subscribe for future content, comment and suggest subjects for new videos. Any feedback is appreciated. Also don't forget that the description will load both timestamps, a link to the texture files and a link to the script I made to control a flickering light. See you next time!